Hello, OpenXML developers. This is the introduction to Power Tools for OpenXML 3.0. The big feature in version 3.0 is that commandlets are now written in PowerShell script. They're written as advanced functions. In the next screencast, I am going to give a little tutorial on how to write advanced functions and specifically how to write advanced functions so that you can implement your own commandlets for Power Tools for OpenXML. Step one, download. Go to powertools.codeplex.com. Go to the Downloads tab. Download Power Tools for OpenXML 3.0.0 or later. Step two, unzip it. Unzip it to a folder such as your username, documents, open XML power tools. If you are new to PowerShell, then the first thing you're going to need to do is set execution policy. In order to set execution policy, you need to run as administrator. So press start, type in PowerShell, right click and click run as administrator. Type set dash execution policy unrestricted. The next thing we need to do is we need to unblock everything in this folder. So the easiest way to do that is click in the address bar for Windows Explorer and type in PowerShell. Enter the command dir star dot star dash recurse. Pipe that into unblock file. Next step, we need to actually build Power Tools for OpenXML. We need to build the library. For a number of reasons, we don't distribute binaries with OpenXML Power Tools. So easiest way is go in and open up the OpenXML Power Tools examples solution. And select build, rebuild solution. and everything built just fine. Next thing we need to do is modify our PS module path variable so that we can get to the OpenXML Power Tools module. I have included three different profile examples right here. This profile example right here, all it does is call into via the home drive and home path, the profile.ps1. And the same thing happens here. There is a profile for running the shell without ISE, and there's a profile that runs when we're running ISE. Both of those run this particular PowerShell script. And what it does is it looks for OpenXML power tools in the PS module path. And if it's not there, it adds that to PS module path. If you don't already have PowerShell installed, or if you don't already have profiles, you can follow the instructions that I'm going to present here exactly. However, if you already have PowerShell and you've already set up a profile, then you'll need to modify these instructions as appropriate so you don't override your existing profile scripts. Here I'm going to cd dot dot so that I'm in my documents directory. I'll make the directory Windows PowerShell and now I'm going to copy those PowerShell scripts into Windows PowerShell. So I'm now ready to quit PowerShell and re-enter PowerShell. One thing that's super easy to do is when you're in some particular folder and you want to run PowerShell with the current directory set to that folder, you can browse to that folder in Windows Explorer and then type in PowerShell ISE 
Now it'll start up an integrated scripting environment with that directory as the current directory. We now can import our module. The module name for this new version of Power Tools for OpenXML is OXPT. I wanted a short name. Now I'm going to run quickly through the various commandlets. First commandlet is new docx. In Windows Explorer, you can right click and create a new document, but all I ever create is an empty document. With new docx, there are lots of options. So for instance, we can tell that I want some bulleted text. I want a table and I want some content controls. Oh, I have to put a name in here. So my new doc dot docx and it runs. So now we can open my new doc dot docx and here we see some bulleted text. There's a table and down here we see some text that is in a content control. The documents that are created by this command that are created via the OpenXML SDK and more specifically by Document Builder, that uses a slightly different pattern for the markup than what you might see with Word, if Word saves the same document. So if you want to see exactly the markup that Word would use for this particular document, what you can do is you can add one more option here, load and save using Word. And if you have Office installed, it'll use Office Automation to load and save that document. And now the markup in that document will be exactly as Word saves it. Of course, you can get help, new docx. I can tell it I want the full help. And we get all kinds of help with examples and it lists out all of the arguments that you can pass to new docx. There is a directory called OXPT examples and in there there are five different example scripts ex dash clear docx track revisions etc. The next thing I'm going to demonstrate is the merge docx commandlet. So in order to demonstrate that, I'll go ISC -E -X, merge docx and we'll look at the script. Here's how you do it. You set up document one as some source. You set up document two as another source. You create an array of those sources and then you call merge docx, passing an output path and passing the sources. I'll press F5 and it will execute merge docx for all three of these examples. And it's all done. We can see the various out dash merge documents that were produced by merge docx. And in a future screencast, I'll dive in deeper into merge docx. Next thing that we can do is test open XML valid. And I'll first test valid.docx. Yep, that's valid. And then I will test invalid.docx. And it's not valid. And if it's not valid, we can also call get open XML validation errors. And that will report the errors. That's all I'm going to cover in this screencast, short and sweet. We're certainly going to add lots more commandlets to this in the very near future. I'll be recording a screencast per commandlet as I do them. So stay tuned. Come back to openxmldeveloper.org often and see what we've been doing with this new version of Power Tools for OpenXML. Cheers.